Spa Therapies Part 2. This is an NCB TNB approved for four hours continuing education hours. Welcome to this NCB TNB approved online class. I will be presenting today and my name is Denise Kajini. I'm a licensed massage therapist in four states and state certified in California and nationally certified in massage and body work since 2001. I have 20 years experience in the therapeutic massage and body work area and 15 years experience as a massage therapy instructor in the states of California and Missouri. In addition, I'm a naturopath with 15 years experience at a wellness center in Missouri. Currently, my passion is teaching, having a private practice called Transformation Through Touch and working in the spa industry. How this online class works. You can take as long as you like watching this online class on Spa Therapies Part 2 for the massage therapist. When you're finished watching, send me an email at kajini.d at gmail.com if you have not received your final exam. When you have completed your final exam, email it back to me at kajini.d at gmail.com. I will grade the exam and when you pass with a grade of 70% or more, you will receive your e-certificate of achievement for this NCB TMB approved online class on Spa Therapies Part 2. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Now sit back and relax and let's begin. What are body treatments good for? Different body treatments are good for different things and they are usually clear about their goals. You may have a massage to soothe your muscles and help relieve your stress. You may have a fairly regular scrub to exfoliate, moisturize, and reduce cellulite. You might decide that you want to pay penance for unhealthy eating by being wrapped in algae for a few hours to be detoxified or you could choose to embark on a series of body treatments that will help you change your lifestyle and your shape that involve diet, exercise, and therapeutic massage. And the choice is yours. Most body treatments will leave you feeling invigorated and relaxed, and this is a powerful combination. This online class, Spa Therapies Part 2, we will discuss types of spas and different spa therapies, such as face massage, like Marma Massage and Acupressure Face Massage, Indian Head Massage, Lomi Lomi Massage, all types of Stone Massage, Lava Shell Massage, Hair and Scalp Massage, and all forms of Hydrotherapy. The different types of spas. Spas have evolved to include four basic types of facilities which offer their own signature treatments. They are day spas. Those are spas that provide health, beauty, and therapeutic treatment with services varying by provider. Most are combined with a hair salon. And as the name suggests, day spas offer their services on a day use basis where clients remain for a few hours or for the day. Overnight accommodations are not available. Next is your hotel or resort spa. These spas are owned by and operated within a resort or hotel. Their facilities provide professionally administered spa services, fitness and wellness components, and spa cuisine menu choices. Destination spa is the next. These facilities offer overnight accommodations, professionally administered spa services, physical fitness and wellness elements, educational programming, and spa cuisine to provide their guests with a lifestyle improvement and health enhancement. And lastly are the medical spas. Provide both medical and wellness care in an environment that integrates spa services. These services are supervised under a medical doctor. Muscles of the face. The muscles of the head and neck perform many important tasks, including movement of the head and neck, chewing and swallowing, speech, facial expression, and movement of the eyes. These diverse tasks require both strong, forceful movements and some of the fastest, finest, and most delicate adjustments in the entire human body. 
The muscles of the face are unique among group of muscles in the body. While most muscles connect to and move only bones, facial muscles mostly connect bones to skin. These muscles pull on the skin to produce a seemingly infinite number of facial expressions and to move the lips and cheeks during speech and eating. The neck muscles, including the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius, are responsible for the gross motor movements in the muscular system of the head and neck. They move the head in every direction, pulling the skull and jaw toward the shoulders, spine, and scapula. Working in pairs on the left and right sides of the body, these muscles control the flexion and extension of the head and neck. Working individually, these muscles rotate the head or flex the neck laterally to the left or right. Neck muscles contract to adjust the posture of the head throughout the course of the day and have some of the greatest endurance of any muscles in our body. Spot therapies for the face. A facial is the second most popular spa treatment after a massage. A facial works best when it is part of an ongoing program of skin care and is done by a licensed esthetician. Massage therapists are not licensed to give facials to clients. Massage therapists can perform a face procedure by applying products and using face massage techniques. Facials are just one of the steps to maintaining healthy, clear skin, but can also be a relaxing way to pamper yourself. Facials consist of the cleansing and exfoliating of the skin and the extraction of blackheads or whiteheads that clog pores. Oftentimes, facials are designed or catered to a client's skin type or problem areas. Because everyone's skin is different, but whether skin is dry, oily, or a combination of the two, sensitive or normal, there is a facial to cater to its needs. For a massage therapist, a face procedure is usually an add-on in a spa industry to a body massage. It usually takes about 15 to 20 minutes to perform. While the product is penetrating onto the skin, the massage therapist can perform a mini massage on the hands or feet, for example. What to expect from a facial? When having a facial treatment, it is important to be clear about how your skin reacts to products or to being touched. Your esthetician will be able to diagnose what sorts of products will be used during the treatment and what sorts of regimen should be followed after your appointment. Facials usually begin with a cleansing and an analysis of the skin under a bright light. How the esthetician proceeds will depend on their diagnosis, but the process usually consists of exfoliation, extraction, massage, a mask, and a moisturizer. Because everyone has different levels of comfort or tolerance, be clear with your esthetician about how much extraction you can stand as some find the procedure uncomfortable. Extractions are usually followed by a relaxing, stroking massage to stimulate blood flow and circulation to the face muscles. Finally, a mask catering to the client's skin type will usually be applied before the facial ends with the application of moisturizers and home care advice is then given. Basic self-massage self-care. Face massage is easy, intuitive, and mostly absent from skincare routines, even though it can be a great alternative to invasive treatments like Botox. Like the rest of your body, your face has many muscles. And like your shoulders or back, it gets tight and holds on to stress. By relaxing muscles and connective tissue, massaging the face softens expression-induced lines around your eyes, lips, and brows helps expel acne-causing toxin and depuffs and brightens the eye area. It also increases circulation, oxygenating the blood and encouraging the presence of fresh, healing red blood cells. A basic face massage involves forehead, eyes, no ears, mouth, chin, jawline, neck, behind the ears, and at times the scalp as well. 
Try this on yourself to get a feel of working on your own face. Since facial skin is delicate, massage the face by applying soft strokes. Use the index, middle, and ring finger to massage, especially for feather strokes. Additionally, make sure you do the strokes in an upward motion, which can revitalize the facial muscles. You should cleanse your face before starting the massage. The massage therapist can start with eyebrows, followed by nose, cheekbones, under the eyes, and nose bridge. Run and pat gently your fingers in a circular motion. Next, work on ears, behind the ears, and finally the neck. Aromatic oils such as avocado oil, evening primrose oil, rose geranium oil, lavender oil, or German chamomile oil are a good choice for the face. Massaging using a good moisturizer can hydrate the skin and also acts as a good lubricant while working on the face. A face massage procedure. Have the client lie on a massage table covered with a flat sheet and a hand towel placed at the top of the table for the hair wrap. Place a blanket for warmth over the client. The recipient can also sit in a semi-reclined position, whatever is more comfortable. Wash your hands in hot water with an antibacterial soap, then wrap the client's hair in the face towel to keep it out of the client's face. Place a warm towel from the hot towel cabbie on the face to moisten the skin, avoiding the eyes and nose. Clean the face with a gentle cleanser before massaging. And squeeze a dime-sized portion of massage oil or lotion onto your palm. Rub your hands together until the lotion or oil is evenly distributed. If you use too much oil, your hands will be too slippery to properly massage. Starting with a gentle application of the product in light circular effleurage strokes and moving upward from the shoulders, neck, and below the chin to the forehead, product should not be applied on the eyelids or directly underneath the eyes. And then start massaging. A face massage routine starts at the top of the shoulders and then the neck. You move on to the cheeks, lightly draw big circles using your fingers moving upward. On one side of the face at a time, lightly stroke from the mid jaw to the cheekbone with long upward strokes, pressing firmly for a moment at the top. Work smile lines with upward strokes from the corners of the mouth to the corners of the nose. With your fingers, Gently lift and hold both brows to open up the eye area. Lightly stroke in a circle around the eye socket out to the temples, eventually expanding to include the forehead. To plump lips, use your thumb and index fingers to gently pluck all across the top and bottom lip, which stimulates blood flow. You repeat the entire massage approximately five times and you apply more oil or lotion to your hands as needed. Types of face massage. Face massage comes with an array of exhilarating health benefits as it helps to reduce stress, increase blood circulation, and also helps to cure sinusitis and headaches. The lymph nodes present in the chin and jawline areas need stimulation to release lymph fluid that can detoxify the facial area. Indulging in the luxury of a face massage is a stress buster and heightens the mood. A good face massage, which ideally lasts up to 20 minutes, can also help strain facial muscles to loosen up and relax, thereby reducing wrinkles. In the next section, we'll discuss several different types of face massage and look over each one separately. A revitalizing face massage. This is a breathe easier type of face massage. 
The combination of soothing warm towels and cool stones revitalizes your senses and allows beneficial oxygen and nutrients to penetrate the skin. This kind of face massage can help prevent new tension lines and wrinkles from appearing by relaxing the muscles and by stimulating the blood vessels under the skin. This modality uses hot towels to stimulate circulation and soothing cold stones to reduce inflammation. The service can be customized to assist with TMJ pain and sinus and allergy problems if needed. What is Ayurveda? Ayurveda, known as the science of life in ancient Sanskrit, has been a key part of a comprehensive natural healthcare system in India and Sri Lanka for over 2,000 years. The basic tenet of Ayurveda is that health conditions should be treated with holistic natural therapies tailored to the needs of each individual. In addition to treating the physical body with Ayurvedic herbs, Ayurveda focuses on balancing the mind and spirit to achieve inner harmony. Ayurveda teaches that each person is a blend of three doshas, or vital energies, within the body. They are vata, pitta, and kapha. Each person is born with an optimal balance and a unique harmony among the three doshas. Later in life, negative health may arise from an imbalance in these three doshas. And the science of Ayurveda is used to bring back this essential harmony. Western medicine, which is typically used as a reactive mechanism to fight disease once it occurs, Ayurveda is used to strengthen and nourish the body before the advent of negative health conditions. Ayurvedic practitioners typically recommend a natural course of herbs, diet, exercise, and meditation to bring harmony back to the individual. This can be accomplished with a regimen of detoxification and purging herbs to initially rid the body of negative toxins, followed by beneficial herbs which focus on bringing the three doshas back into balance. In returning the mind, body, and spirit back to its original dosha balance, Ayurvedic practitioners believe that an individual is better able to withstand future illnesses and adverse health conditions while living a more pleasant, harmonious life. The Ayurveda Marma Points Marma points are an important element of Ayurveda's healing power. Developed in India centuries ago, these energy points profoundly affect the body, mind, and spirit, and it facilitates the deepest level of healing. Prana is the current of energy that infuses every cell within the body. Stimulating marmani, or energy points, directly taps into this reservoir of energy and promotes health. This marmani according to their individual energetics, can be compared to the Chinese system of acupuncture points. Detailed commentaries for each marma shed light on their diagnostic and therapeutic scope. Marma therapy integrates vital knowledge of the energy points with specific techniques of Ayurvedic massage, detoxification, acupressure, aromatherapy, yoga practices, meditation, and so much more. In ancient Vedic times, marma points were called bindu, which is also known as a dot, a secret dot, or mystic point. Like a door or pathway, activating a marma point opens into the inner pharmacy of the body. The body is a silent universe, biochemical laboratory, opening every moment to interpret and transform arising events. Touching a marma point changes the body's biochemistry and can unfold radical acclimal changes in one's makeup. Stimulation of these inner pharmacy pathways signals the body to produce exactly what it needs, including hormones and neurochemicals that heal the body, mind, and consciousness. 
this deep dimension of marma therapy has the potential to unfold spiritual healing. Marmas are found all over the body, but are particularly concentrated on the face, neck, and upper chest. A marma massage. The primary purpose of a marma massage is to promote the flow of prana in the body. Marma points are switches that when opened up, allow for the increased flow of energy. Through the gentle application of transdermal herbs, essential oils and light touch, the marma points are awakened. One feels an abiding connection in rejuvenating stillness. Marma therapy balances the flow of energy through the muscles, joints, and organs of the body. Marma therapy is an important tool for preventing and treating imbalancing imbalances in Ayurveda. Treatment is based according to the unique needs of the client. Marma therapy balances the doshas, increased digestive fire, detoxification, reducing ama, which is toxins, and promotes energy and rejuvenation. A light touch is used to treat marma points. While lying on the massage table or sitting in a comfortable chair, very gentle pressure like acupressure is used on the marma points. Massaging marma points is most often done in conjunction with a full or partial Ayurvedic massage. Essential oils and or transdermal herbal oils are the main methods for treating the marma points. Essential oils are highly effective in altering our energy. Marmas are anointed with organic therapeutic grade aromatic oils being specified to each location and condition. Marmas being concentrated centers of energy, essential oils can penetrate easily and deeply affecting the entire body. The Marma Face Procedure Ayurvedic massage focuses on marma points, which are the body's vital energy points located over lymph nodes, joints, and the seven chakras, which are associated with the major endocrine glands. Marma points are considered important in promoting balance in the body and stimulating the body's circulatory, lymphatic, and nervous systems. In the Ayurvedic tradition, it's considered that through massage, yoga, and meditation, these energy centers are opened, improving the state of mind and body. It takes around 20 minutes to carry out the full massage from head to toe. We will focus on one section at a time, beginning with the face massage, which can be carried out in isolation or as part of a full body massage. This particular massage takes around five minutes to carry out and acts as a natural facelift, helping to tone the cheeks, reduce facial lines, and generally improve the appearance of the skin on the face. We recommend beginning by cleansing the face to remove the superficial layer of debris from the skin. When this has been rinsed away, perform the face massage. You want to take one or two drops of oil onto the fingers of each hand, sufficient to achieve a smooth glide of the fingers across the skin. When massaging face and neck, use a very light touch as the skin is very delicate. Each procedure should be repeated three to four times, and marma points should be massaged gently in a circular clockwise motion with the middle finger. The marma face massage routine begins with the neck with both palms lightly massage upward from the collarbone to the chin. At the chin, place the index fingers of the right hand in the cleft above the chin and the middle finger beneath the chin. Slide the fingers up the jawline to the right ear and repeat on the left side using the left hand. When you're at the cheeks, you use the index fingers to massage from chin to nose along the smile line, then with the palm massage the cheeks upward from the edge of the mouth to the temples. At the eyes, place the ring finger beneath the eyebrow where it meets the nose 
and glide outwards using a very light touch following the eye socket around beneath the eye and back to the starting point. At the third eye, starting at the side of each nostril, use the index finger and middle fingers to massage up the length of the nose, continuing to the middle of the forehead, the site of the third eye or the sixth chakra. Then at the forehead, using the middle and ring fingers on one hand, Massage from the bridge of the nose between the eyebrows upward toward the hairline. Using all four fingers of the right hand, sweep the fingers from left to right across the forehead. Then use the left hand and sweep fingers from the right to the left across the forehead. The Marma Face Points by finishing the massage, each of the marma points below, you'll be using the middle finger. At spot one will be the center of the chin, then the corners of the mouth, then between the nose and the upper lip, the outer corners of the nose, the center of the cheekbones, the lower lids, lids just above the cheekbones. And this skin usually is too delicate for massage, so just press lightly. Then you go to the junction between eyebrows and nose on the lower part of the eyebrow ridge, then the temples, then you go to the third eye, which is the sixth chakra, and then finally the crown of the head. You place your hands on the crown of the head and move back and forth. A tense or angry face can lead to frown lines lines from squinting eyes and furrows in the forehead. Face massage can relax the tension in your face and improve your mood. For each of the following four areas, I'll go over each one next, apply a small amount of massage oil to the middle and index fingers together, then use a gentle circular motion for 30 to 60 seconds to receive the benefit. Area one, the temples. The main facial marma points are on the third eye area, the temples, the corner of the mouth, and edges of the nose. These points also regulate the function of the sense organs for seeing, tasting, hearing, and smelling, and are responsible for facial appearance and expressions. Area two, the third eye. Use the middle and index fingers of one hand Find the space between the eyebrows and gently massage. Area three, the sinus point. Use the middle and index finger of both hands. Find the outside edges of the nose and gently massage. Area four, using the middle and index fingers of both hands, find the outside edges of the mouth and gently massage. The benefits of Marma is that it balances the doshas, it increases digestive fire, which improves digestion, it reduces toxins, promotes energy enhancement, rejuvenates the body, is particularly good for structure problems and arthritis, it relieves nerve pain, promotes deep relaxation, it's a great stress reliever. You can get relief from TMJ, which is the grinding the teeth or neck tension. It helps with insomnia. It's a natural way to age gracefully, and it can help with healing of pre and post surgery. What is acupressure? Acupressure is a theory developed over 5,000 years ago as an important aspect of Asian, especially Chinese medicine. Chinese doctors observed that muscular tension had a tendency to concentrate around certain areas. Acupressure uses precise finger placement and pressure over specific points along the body. These points follow specific channels, known as meridians, the same channels used in acupuncture. Pressure points are like whirlpools of energy that can influence the flow of qi through the meridian line. 
meridian lines when blocked or stagnant turn into contractions in the muscles or what is called lines of tensions in qigong according to asian medical philosophy activation of these points with pressure can improve blood flow release tension and enhance or unblock life energy known in china as qi this release allows energy to flow more freely through the meridians promoting the lines of tensions to relax and open to increase blood flow healing and the restoration of proper function facial massage focuses on muscle properties while facial acupressure addresses many levels including toning muscles energy balance and flow specific point remedies general wellness skin tone and circulation Many meridians and reflex zones run through the face, so when you affect points on the face, you are affecting deeper layers of greater complexity. Acupressure for the face. The Chinese used acupressure points as a beauty treatment for thousands of years. An acupressure beauty treatment enhances muscle tone and increases circulation. The Heavenly appearance and facial beauty acupressure points improve skin condition and the tone of facial muscles and connective tissues. This can lessen the appearance of wrinkles without drugs or surgery. After years of pulling and stretching the skin, the connective tissue is weakened, loosening the skin. Simple finger pressure on the heavenly appearance point, along with therapeutic facial exercises, relieves congested areas and relaxes the muscles. When muscles are relaxed, toxins are released and eliminated, which of course benefits your outward appearance. Acupressure points release the flow of life energy, which improves both how you feel as well as how you look. Acupressure relaxing points. Disorders of the nervous system are the origins of all sickness and the cause of tiredness and tension. You want to begin the session by calming the system. The relaxing phase focuses mainly on the forehead and eyebrows. Your direction will be to work from top to bottom. Point one, it calms the nervous system and soothes pain. It's located to the left and right of the forehead. And you want to use horizontal movements of one half to one inch in length. Next would be point two, located to the left and right along the eyebrow, closer to the nose. This represents the arms and shoulders. It relaxes the nervous system and combats insomnia. You want to press lightly along the eyebrow medial to lateral. Point three, located at the third eye point, calms the mind, reduces agitation, and promotes mental balance. You don't want to overstimulate this point as it could actually cause agitation. Don't stimulate this point if the client has low blood pressure. And lastly, point four, this point is located in the hollow in front of the ear and using a vertical movement is recommended. It corresponds to the solar plexus and is an overall balance point. You will end each phase with point number four, as it also serves as a correction point. This point is always a good beginning and ending for all face work. It helps to regulate blood pressure and heartbeat. If you think you may have overstimulated an area, follow with this point to restore calm and balance. Working it with downward strokes will create peace while working with upward strokes will tone and energize. Toning up acupressure. The toning phase allows for release of blocked energy and boosts energy stores. Liberating the energy will stimulate the life force, which will in turn revitalize the body and organs. Your direction for this phase is on the face in front of the bottom toward the top. Working the points like you did in the beginning segment, continue stimulating the points with small sweeping movements. The point, number five, works on the small intestines, 
and conception vessel and stimulate this point vertically in a downward motion. Point six increases energy and blood pressure. Obviously do not stimulate if the client has high blood pressure. It also brightens the mind. This point also increases uterine contractions, so you don't use it on pregnant clients unless they are giving birth. Point three is used again as in the relaxing phase. Point seven is said to stimulate the chakras, brain and pituitary gland, and it improves memory and clears the mind. Point eight, free circulation around the brain and soothes many issues related to the head. And finally, finishing with point number four as an overall balance. A more in-depth study of this, go to our four hour continuing online class on acupressure for the massage therapist. Indian head massage. The Indian head massage comes from and is based on the ancient Ayurvedic form of healing that dates back almost 4,000 years. It works the upper three chakras and can be used for physical harmony, for healing, for vitality, and for relaxation. Step one of the Indian head routine. The client is in a seated position and have the recipient take a seat and get comfortable. You stand behind them, place your hands lightly on their shoulders as you both take several deep breaths. Step two, massage the shoulders. Begin easing away fatigue and tension with an upper back, shoulder, arm, and neck massage. Gently squeeze the trapezius muscle at the base of the neck starting close to the neck. Work your way outward to the shoulder. Repeat this three times, allowing the pressure to increase with each pass. Step three, work in toward the spine. Bring your hands back up next to the neck with the thumbs extended and make small circles with the thumb on either side of the backbone, just below the collar line. Step four, massage the tops of the shoulders. Place your forearms at the sides of the neck and roll them outward toward the shoulder by rotating at the wrists. After rotating, lift your forearms and move them a couple inches away from the neck and repeat. When you reach the shoulder, come back to the center and repeat this process two or more times. Step five, Work up to the base of the skull. Continue with the circles up the back of the neck until you reach the hairline. Lower your hands back down and repeat two or more times. Massage the neck. Step to one side of your client and place one hand at the base of the client's neck and your front hand gently on their forehead to keep their head from falling forward. With the rear hand, open your thumb and glide your hand up the back of the neck. Don't put pressure directly on the vertebrae. Once you reach the hairline, remain there for a moment with light pressure on the back of the head. Lower your rear hand and repeat from the base of the neck. You can even add some circling up toward the stroke if there seems to be a lot of tension present. Repeat this about five times. When your rear hand reaches the hairline, for the last time, let it remain there. Step seven, slowly allow the head to tilt forward without strain or effort and keep your hand at the client's hairline to hold the head. Step eight, move the head back. Gently lift the head back to vertical and continue backwards. Again, without forcing, simply allow the head to move within its own range of motion. Repeat this three times, forward and back. Step nine, massage the head. Step back behind the client and loosen his or her hair if it's restrained. Bring your hands with fingers spread to the sides of the head, fingers pointing up. 
Use a light pressure and slowly move the hands up with a shampooing-like motion, trying to keep the heel of the hands in contact with the scalp as well as the fingers. Once you reach the top of the head, allow the fingers to rise off while maintaining a gentle traction from the heels of the hands. Now lower your hands and move them around to a different area of the head. Repeat this four or five times, covering the entire scalp. Gently rub the scalp, bring one hand to the client's forehead for stabilities as you place the heel of the other hand in contact with the back of the head. Begin rubbing the scalp by moving your rear hand vigorously back and forth. Continue rubbing as much of the scalp as you can reach and then switch hands and repeat to the other side. Lightly and briskly rub the scalp all over with just the fingertips of both hands. You want to continue this for about a minute. In step 12, stroke your fingers through your client's hair from the top of the forehead Let the final strokes draw their head back slightly and then lay the fingers over the forehead and draw the fingers down and along the brow line to each temple, making small circles over the temples. You want to repeat this process about three times. And then finishing up with smooth, gentle strokes beginning at the forehead, slowly work your way back to the head. Do this for about a minute allowing the pressure to become lighter toward the end until finally your hands float off the head. The benefits of Indian head massage. The therapeutic benefits of Indian head massage are comprehensive, suggesting that you make it a part of your overall health routine. They include relief from pain and stiffness in the muscles of the face, neck, upper back and shoulders, increased mobility of the neck joints, relief from tension and hangover headaches, eye strain, TMJ and nasal congestion, helping with renewed energy, a reduction of depression, anxiety and other stress related issues, higher levels of creativity, clarity and concentration and better memory a sense of tranquility and calmness and positive well-being, restful sleep that leaves you refreshed, deeper, calmer respiratory system, a stronger immune system, improved health tone, health and color, healthy hair and scalp, increased self-esteem and self-worth with greater awareness, and balanced chakras. Additional modalities. Because of the versatility of this treatment, there can be any number of enhancing touches and services that can be added to an Ayurvedic face rejuvenation. They can be an herbal steam, cool compresses, customized masks, misting with aromatherapy or herbal mists, foot baths at the beginning, Spa therapies for the hair and scalp. Many moisture treatments, natural ingredients may include things like honey, avocado, coconut, banana, olive oil, pomegranate oils, can leave strands of hair soft, silky, and shiny. But does your hair ever feel dry? Well, if your regular conditioner isn't working, to replenish your moisture, you probably need to add moisture back in with a deep treatment. You want to wet your hair because moisture will penetrate your hair better and your hair will remain, retain more water when it's wet. You can also wash your hair if you like, but many need to rewash after the treatment. Smooth the mixture all over your hair. Combing it is good for your hair and making sure it's not tangled. You may want sections of your hair so that you ensure the treatment reaches everywhere. Then you'll cover your hair 
with plastic wrap or a disposable shower cap. Then you add heat. This, you can use a heated shower cap, use a blow dryer to heat up your hair, or warm a towel in the dryer. Just make sure to heat up your hair, since this also helps the moisture penetrate the hair shafts better. Insulate the hair, and this will retain the heat. Leave the treatment on for about 30 minutes or to an hour. The longer the better. You can also leave it in overnight. You rinse out the treatment, shampoo and condition your hair. Don't use a clarifying shampoo as this may strip too much of the moisture that you've just added back into your hair. Make sure to brush thoroughly to remove any particles left behind. A natural hair repair treatment. Natural ingredients improve damaged hair, leaving strands strong, supple, and healthy looking. For example, let's just talk about tea tree oil. It comes from a native Australian tree. The oil is prized for its strong antifungal and antibacterial properties, which makes it a wonderful acne solution and antiseptic. Tea tree oil is also great for hair, helping problems such as dry hair, dry scalp, and damaged hair. When tea tree oil is applied to the scalp, it helps to unblock hair follicles. Not only does this allow new hair to grow, but it's essential for keeping hair moisturized in the most natural way possible. All scalps produce an oily secretion called sebum, which travels down the hair shaft and keeps it moisturized. Blocked follicles slow sebum production, and hair becomes dry and frizz prone. Tea tree oil shampoos are readily available at health food stores, but you can make your own by simply adding a few drops of oil to your current shampoo. About eight or 10 drops in an eight ounce formula is good. For more direct treatment, mix one part tree tree tea tree oil into 10 parts of a milder oil such as olive or almond oil. Massage this into your scalp and let it sit for a few minutes before shampooing. Tea tree oil isn't just for a dry scalp. You can apply it directly to the hair for moisturizing and strengthening effects. For a full hair treatment, massage the oil into the roots, then work your way down the cuticle until you reach the tips. Apply a little extra oil to the tips if there is a problem with split ends or breakage. Tea tree oil is very strong, so you don't need much. In fact, a tip for the client is if you're heading out, dab a drop or two onto your fingertips and comb through your hair very lightly. No need to wash. For serious damage, try adding tea tree oil to a regular deep conditioner and applying as usual. Or make your own using almond, avocado, jojoba, or olive oil and a few drops of tea tree. A scalp balance treatment. This treatment features a deep restorative massage with the aroma therapeutic essential oil blend that will bring the healthiest balance to your scalp, setting the stage for beautiful hair. The massage therapist methodically applies hair and scalp oils, an organic line based on classic aromatherapy, to soothe away any traces of stress with a scalp massage. Oils smell incredible. Jojoba, acai, and pomegranate, to name a few, and revive tired tresses as oils penetrate deep into the scalp and throughout the entire length of hair. A scalp detox treatment deeply cleanses using aromatherapy or herbal deep cleansers, features a refreshing massage with a product that gently cleans your scalp and removes buildup that may affect healthy hair. One way to ensure your hair grows long and healthy is to go a step further than shampooing by doing a scalp detox treatment. At times we forget that our scalp is living and breathing and the hair strands are dead. We spend so much time and energy and products on the hair, we neglect the reason why we have it in the first place, because it grows from the scalp. As we continue to pile on product after product, we don't know why our scalp is dry or itchy. Basically, it's the scalp's way of telling us that something is wrong. 
Hair products that we use daily can clog pores and create buildup on top of accumulated dead skin, which can cause dull, greasy, and slow hair growth. Shampooing alone does not cleanse your scalp deep enough to get rid of all that buildup. Therefore, detoxifying your scalp is a great process to include in your healthy hair care regimen. To prevent dry hair and scalp, a mass treatment is for a deep clarifying cleanse and should not be used more than once a month. A scalp detox treatment includes massaging in a mask to exfoliate the scalp, which unclogs your pores of dead skin cells, remove toxins from the hair follicles, roots, and oil glands. So, step one, you mix all the ingredients in a small container. Step two, Part your hair in small sections and apply the mask down each part on the scalp. Step three, massage the mask into the scalp in a gentle circular motion. Step four, cover your hair and scalp with a shower cap for about 10 to 15 minutes. And step five, shampoo and condition hair as normal. For an alternative to shampooing your hair, you can finish the detox treatment off with a raw apple cider vinegar rinse and then condition as normal. Raw apple cider vinegar helps to balance the hair and scalp pH levels, kills the bacteria that causes dandruff and itchy scalp, and gives the hair extra shine. Hair and scalp treatment is like a spa for your head. It begins with a restorative scalp treatment and ends with a transformative moisture or repair treatment. Your hair will look healthier and shinier, feel softer and silky. You apply oil to the whole scalp by parting the hair in sections. You massage the oil into the scalp then gently tap the head all over with the pads of your fingers. Gently pull small tufts of hair from the roots and twist gently a few times. Then you place your finger and massage in a clockwise motion for 30 seconds, moving skin firmly over the bone. Repeat the procedure to another point over the scalp. You want to comb the oil through the hair, and for best results, leave the oil on for at least an hour, covering it with a shower cap and a warm towel. Afterwards, you'll wash the oil out of the hair using shampoo. In Ayurveda, conditioners are not considered healthy for the hair as they build up, as the buildup tends to trap dirt and block hair follicles. So they use a raw apple cider vinegar rinse as a great alternative. Hair care. Luscious locks can enrich your beauty and thus your physical appeal. Maintaining a balance in the right requirements of the body is very essential if you want to have healthy and beautiful hair. There are different types of hair. Some are normal, dry, oily, and some are combinations. The main requirement is maintaining a balance in the proteins, fats, and oils, and conditioning. You can do this in a natural way without using excessive cosmetic lotions and creams. You want to use hair care products that nourish hair follicles both inside and out. Using hair care products ensures that your hair gets all the nutrients and maintains a balance as well. The anatomy of the hair. Hair is a simple in structure but is important in function. Hair is made of a tough protein called keratin. A hair follicle anchors each hair into the skin. The hair bulb forms the base of the hair follicle. In the hair bulb, living cells divide and grow to build the hair shaft. Blood vessels nourish the cells in the hair bulb and deliver hormones that modify hair growth and structure at different times in life. Hair growth occurs in cycles consisting of three phases. The anagen phase, which is the growth phase, Mostly hair is growing at any given time. Each hair spends several years in this phase. Then you have the catagen or the transitional phase. Over a few weeks, 
hair grows slow and the hair follicle shrinks. And then the telogen phase or the resting phase, over months, hair growth stops and the old hair detaches from the hair follicle. A new hair begins the growth phase, pushing the old hair out. Hair grows at different rates with different people. The average rate is about a half an inch per month. Hair color is created by pigment cells producing melanin in the hair follicle. With aging, pigment cells die and hair turns gray. Scalp massage. For hair to be strong and beautiful, your body needs to be in a state of homeostasis and receiving the nutrients it needs. Factors such as trauma, stress, anxiety, all affect our hair because they reduce the flow of blood and oxygen to the scalp. Hair growth begins beneath the skin surface in a little bulbous structure called a follicle. There, a clump of cells called the papilla produce the keratin, a specialized protein which becomes a shaft of hair. The growth and health of every hair depends on these receiving rich supplies of oxygen and nutrients. When circulation to the scalp is reduced for any reason, the papillae receive fewer nutrients and less oxygen and the hair suffers. So scalp massage is one of the most beneficial treatments for maintaining beautiful hair. In Ayurveda, the scalp massage is traditionally carried out daily, but benefits are gained by performing massages only once a week. Oils have been traditionally used for nourishing and feeding the scalp to assist in restoring and maintaining healthy hair and condition. In Ayurveda, scalp massage involves using oils to massage the morma points on the scalp, which are considered to connect and stimulate health in other body regions. In our balancing hair treatment, we have blended the traditional Ayurvedic oils, coconut, sesame, neem, and hemp, with other hair restoring oils like macadamia and rosemary to create the perfect nourishing treatment. Practicing this regularly, the following procedure will bring a beautiful luster to your hair and long lasting health benefits. Many scalp massages start with the neck massage to relax and start activating blood circulation to the scalp. A face mask is used to nourish the face. An example of timing is 15 minutes for the neck and shoulder massage and 30 minutes for a scalp and hair massage. The type of strokes used are a gentle pinching, a concentric rotation, lateral zigzag, bulldozer, drainage, combing. We'll go over each one of the following scalp massage techniques individually. Gentle pinching. This stimulates the epidermis and increases the blood and lymph circulation. Gently pinch the neck with even pressure at the base and continue up the scalp toward the forehead. Use one hand to hold the head and the other hand to pinch and then switch. Place the thumb and index finger of both hands by the ears, gently pinching from the sides of the head to the center. Continue using different path lines. Concentric rotation. You use this stroke to soften the scalp, which will become loose under the fingers. This elasticity will allow for better circulation of the vascular system. Moving the scalp on the skull in a circular motion, start at the occipital ridge and move all the way up to the forehead. Do several different paths before turning the head and repeating on the other side. Reverse, starting at the forehead, and moving down to the occipital ridge. The lateral zigzag stroke. This is used to stimulate the blood circulation of the scalp. Turn the head to one side and support with one hand. Use the fingers of the other hand and apply gentle pressure in short lateral zigzags across the scalp from back to front using a different path line Repeat with the other side. 
the bulldozer stroke. This is used to stimulate the circulation of the scalp. Begin at the base of the head using short strokes and continue to the forehead. Use stiff fingers gently together and apply pressure constantly, downward, slightly, then hold, then apply pressure upwards. Drainage. This is used to stimulate the blood circulation of the scalp. Palms are on each side of the head and starting at the occipital ridge, squeeze and push hands upward and inward toward the top of the head. Reverse, starting at the top of the head and squeezing downward and inward toward the shoulders. You'll finally finish with pressure points along the shoulders. Combing. This helps with stimulation and relaxation of the scalp. This is used with the application, for example, of rosemary honey mask or the spa conditioner or products. Comb from the scalp to the ends of the hair, making sure to leave a hand on the scalp while combing to the ends. The benefits of scalp massage. In Ayurveda, the traditional scalp massage is considered to promote hair growth and health, promoting a glossy shine, relieving tension in the neck and back, and the marma points one, two, and three are considered to be connected to the pituitary and pineal glands, helping to regulate hormone secretions, helping to reduce stress, regulate blood pressure, and enhance the mood. Hydrotherapy. Hydrotherapy is the use of water in all of its forms to cleanse and detoxify the body, to treat illness and prevent dehydration. The oldest written texts regarding hydrotherapy are the ancient Sanskrit writings of India, believed to be some 5,000 years old. It's one of the oldest forms of medical treatment and the curative properties of water are recorded in the writings of several ancient cultures. Hydrotherapy involves using water to treat diseases and ease physical pain. The Romans are known for their use of baths and spas to cleanse and detoxify. Senators and citizens alike enjoyed the benefits of heated and cooled waters. Hippocrates advocated the benefits of both hot and cold water and prescribed them for a variety of complaints. In the Roman Empire, water's role in a healthy lifestyle was epitomized by the key role that public baths played in Roman cultural life. The Dark Ages followed the fall of the Roman Empire. Bathing and hydrotherapy fell into disuse, resulting in the spread of disease and pestilence. Western Europeans seem to have forgotten the lessons taught to them by their ancestors. Surprisingly, it did not gain popularity even though the, through the Renaissance, which was called the Age of Enlightenment. Modern day hydrotherapy followed a revival in the 1800s and hydrotherapy was often employed today in treatments for a number of conditions, including arthritis, spinal injuries, and burns. In the first half of the 1900s, some institutions began installing communal baths to help treat children who had suffered muscular, skeletal, and nerve damage as a result of diseases such as tuberculosis and polio. Hydrotherapy embraces a number of treatments that involve using water at a range of temperatures. These can include whole body steam baths, localized bathing of specific parts of the body, the use of water sprays, and the application of water-saturated bandages and wraps. Vincennes Prenitz has been named the father of modern hydrotherapy. He was the son of a farmer and received very little schooling. However, he possessed an excellent memory and a sharp and rare power of observation. Already at age 15, he began giving medical advice and at the age of 19 had a reputation that he was called to sick people from all over the area to come to them. According to cold water lore, 
as a boy he enjoyed excursions in the forest and once he observed a roe deer that had been wounded by a shot in the back of the thigh every day the roe deer came to a source to its bath and its lamed leg was placed in the cold water and gradually it became completely healed later at the age of seventeen his belief in cold water was strengthened when he cured himself from a broken rib in 1822, when an increasing number of people came, he had to build several new houses to replace his old wooden house to help with his water cure. After continued struggles and having been accused of quackery, his institution was eventually granted state recognition, and the number in 1929, which was only about 29, reached its peak of over 1,700 by the 1830s. As his treatment became quite a health fad, he got competition as numerous others began offering water cures and this therapy has also been taking up scientifically educated physicians. The sickness that helped him in his life took his life in 1851 and was caused by his long-term use of cold water on his chest. The Techniques of Hydrotherapy Water's diversity lends itself to the numerous therapeutic applications of hydrotherapy. Generally, hydrotherapy techniques are divided into three groups. Those that use hot water, those that use cold water, and those that use a combination or both. So for hot water, it's primarily used to increase circulation and blood flow for cleansing and detoxifying tissue. Hot water stimulates the immune system causing white blood cells to move from blood vessels and into the tissues. It increases the supply of nutrients and aids in the expedition of toxins and other bodily wastes. It is also used to relax muscles and increase mobility of joints. Cold water, on the other hand, is used to prevent swelling and reduce pain. It's used primarily in the acute stages of trauma to minimize trauma's destructive effects. It reduces inflammation by causing vasoconstriction of blood vessels. Cold hydrotherapies also increase muscular tone and reduce fever. Alternating, the use of both hot and cold water stimulates the activity of the central nervous system. It causes a release of hormones that control adrenal and other endocrine glands causing general body stimulation and a feeling of vitality. Some of the following forms of hydrotherapy are performed by a physical therapist or a medical doctor, and knowing the techniques that a trained massage therapist can use is important. The Hydro Massage. Hydrotherapy is the use of water in all its form to cleanse and detoxify, and the Hydro Massage involves the use of warm water, which applies mechanical and thermal massage to the body. The technique helps in improving circulation of the blood, relieving pain and tension while relaxing the muscles. Hydromassage relieves pain in the soft tissues and muscles caused by injuries from sports and arthritis. It's also used to treat Crohn's disease, fibromyalgia, insomnia, lupus, multiple sclerosis, and tendinitis. In addition, hydromassage is also used to relieve and manage stress. A Vichy shower is a metal arm with five to seven shower heads that run parallel to a cushioned treatment table so the client can get a shower while lying down. This is usually part of a body treatment like a salt scrub or body wrap. Instead of jumping up and getting in the shower to rinse off the salt or mud, the client simply lies there. The Vichy might be attached to the wall or it's freestanding. It has a hinge so that the therapist can turn the water on and adjust the temperature while it's away from the treatment table. Once it's the right temperature and pressure, the massage therapist will swing it over the client's body. During a Vichy shower, a client is usually draped with towels, one between the legs for women one across the, and one across the breasts, or they can wear disposable underwear. When the client is on their back, the therapist might put something over their face to minimize the water spray on the face. If a client is anxious about nudity, this is probably not the treatment for them. 
Turning over with wet towels tends to be a little sloppy also. The rising temperature foot bath. The feet are immersed in a foot bath filled with water at body temperature. Hot water is gradually added to it to give a final temperature of 103 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. In warm foot baths water of this temperature, it's added straight away and keep it warm afterwards. The procedure should last 10 to 15 minutes and can be done daily. The indications for the use of this would be if someone has cold feet, start of a common cold, or for relaxations. And a warning is that it's best avoided by people who have varicose veins or edema. Showers and baths are used to cleanse the skin of bacteria and dead skin particles. They are unquestionably effective in the treatment of aches, pains, and general body fatigue and headaches. One important factor regarding the bath or shower itself is the temperature of the water. Hot baths and showers tend to relax a person, and cold baths or showers stimulate, counter inflammation, and reduce pain. A sitz bath consists of immersing the pelvis in either hot or cold water. A hot sitz bath is thought to aid inflammation, constipation, vaginal discharge, and impotence. A cold sitz bath is helpful for problems in the region of the pelvis, such as uterine cramps, hemorrhoids, painful ovaries, or testicles. This is generally taken in a hip bath as a cold, rising temperature, or warm sitz bath. Prior to a sitz bath, warming the feet through a warm foot bath helps. Parts of the body not immersed in water should be covered. The indication for a cold sitz bath is for someone who has hemorrhoids or inflammation of the anus. Warm or rising temperature sitz baths is for difficulty in voiding the batter bladder, and irritable bladder, inflammation or infection of the prostate, and preparation for pregnancy. A warning for this, you don't use warm or rising temperature sitz bath for someone who has hemorrhoids. Neutral baths. This form of bath entails an immersion of the full body up to the neck in water from 92 to 98 degrees Fahrenheit. The warm water calms the nervous system with its soothing effects. Neutral baths are typically used to treat emotional and stress-related problems. And skin conditions such as eczema are treated with the addition of medication to the water. A rising temperature hip bath. Various substances can be added to warm and rising temperature baths. The following are the different kinds of the full and partial immersion baths used. In a rising temperature hip bath, this is taken in a tub filled with a hand's breadth of tepid water. Then hot water is gradually added until the red level reaches the navel. The final temperature should be about 103 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Following this procedure, the client is wrapped warm and proceeds to bed. It should last between 15 to 30 minutes and not more than three times a week. This is indicated if a person is abating a common cold or has back pain or sciatica. A warning for this, caution should be used by persons with heart or circulatory problems, hemorrhoids, or varicose veins. Jacuzzis use a mix of either hot or cold water with air, causing massage and deep vibration of muscles, joints, and other tissues. Generally, more accessible than whirlpools, they can be used without professional supervision and are found at local gyms, spas, and other health clubs. They are employed as a relaxation tool. Specifically, they aid in easing tension in the muscles, joints, 
and tendons. Herbal baths can be particularly soothing when you're experiencing a period of stress. There are several ways to prepare an herbal bath. Let me tell you a few. Firstly, simmer a half a cup of herbs in a quart of water in a covered pot for 15 minutes. And while the herbs are simmering, take a short shower to cleanse your body. Then fill the tub with hot or warm water. Strain the liquid from the decoction into the bath and wrap the herbs in a wet washcloth. Soak in the tub for at least 20 minutes using the herbal washcloth to rub all over your body. Secondly, add a half a cup of herbs to running bath water, preferably hot. You might want to cover the drain with a thin mesh screen to prevent the herbs from clogging the pipes. Soak in the tub for 20 to 30 minutes. The third kind, Fill a thin cloth bag with half a cup of herbs, either placing it in the bath water or tying it to the spigot so that the hot water runs through it as it fills the tub. Again, soak for 20 to 30 minutes. Certain herbs are quite effective for creating soothing baths. Combine a handful each of valerian lavender, linden, chamomile, hops, and burdock root and add it to your bath according to one of the preceding methods. Soak for 30 minutes in the tub. Another soothing herbal bath calls for a handful each of hops, linden, valerian, chamomile, yarrow, and passion flower. Prepare this bath according to one of the preceding methods, or simmer the herbs in a quart of water and then drink a half a cup of the liquid with lemon and honey if you wish. Pour the rest in the tub. While soaking in an herbal bath, you can read, meditate, listen to peaceful music, or just sit quietly concentrating on relaxing yourself. Wet Saunas. A sauna is an eliminative procedure. It stimulates blood flow, increases the heart rate, has an immune modulating effect, promotes hormone production, encourages mucosal secretions in the respiratory system, opens the airways, reduces resistance to respiration, regulates the vegetative system, relaxes and can improve mental outlook. Wet saunas use steam, a cleanser and a deep moisturizer for the skin. When inhaled, steam can also be a decongestant for colds, coughs and flu, as well as helpful to a smoker's cough. Saunas and steam baths are similar in effect, and the decision to take one rather than the other will be guided by personal preference. In a sauna, the heat acts more quickly to eliminate toxins through the skin, though some consider the moist air of the steam bath to have a more satisfying effect on the respiratory system. Saunas are deeply relaxing and are a great way to melt away stress. A dry sauna. They incorporate the use of dry, heated air to promote sweating and the release of toxins and impurities of the body through the skin. They entail sitting in an enclosed room on benches made of wood. Typically, a central unit heats the air to a desired temperature of 180 to 212 degrees Fahrenheit. They are used to relax the body and promote perspiration to facilitate the detoxification. The dry sauna raises the temperature of the body to fight harmful agents such as viruses and bacteria that are unable to survive at hyperthermic temperatures. Wraps in a medical spa under doctor's supervision. A wrap is primarily used as a supportive measure for treating fever and localized inflammation. The person receiving treatment should first adopt a relaxed position. Then a linen cloth is moistened with cold water, warm water for respiratory diseases, well wrung out, and then wrapped tightly around the appropriate part of the body, but not too tightly to cause constriction. The moist cloth is then in turn wrapped with a dry cotton or linen cloth. The client is then usually wrapped in a blanket or another cloth and should rest 
between 45 to 60 minutes, or if the intention is to induce sweating, for up to three hours. If the wrap is not felt to be warm after a quarter of an hour, heat should be applied in the form of a hot water bottle or giving warm tea. The wrap should be removed immediately if the person complains of feeling unwell. Indications for a medical wrap under doctor's supervision are a neck wrap for a sore throat, a chest wrap for bronchitis, lung disease, or neuralgia, a body wrap between the coastal arch and pubic bone for inflammatory diseases of the upper abdomen, gastric and duodenal ulcers, cramps, sleeplessness, and fever. A trunk wrap, which is between the pubic bone and armpits, is used for high fever. A hip wrap with gaps between the legs is used for prostatitis, vaginitis, hemorrhoids, anal eczema, inflammation in the pelvic cavity. And calf wrap between the foot and knee is used for edema, for withdrawing heat and fever, and plebitis. In varicose veins, the effect can sometimes be amplified through the use of healing earth or loam poultices. And finally, the joint wrap used in rheumatoid arthritis and arthrosis. Packs in a medical spa. Warm packs. A wrapping cloth is soaked in a hot infusion or decoction of herbs, then wrung out and applied to the patient's body. Alternately, the wraps may receive a coating of mud or fango. As a further alternative, hayseeds may be placed in a sack and steamed. This is used when there's painful or chronic disease such as arthrosis, renal disease, or for stimulating blood flow. The warning is always check that the temperature is tolerable before applying a wrap to the client. Cold packs. Cool, soaked wrapping is spread onto the wrapping cloth and placed on the part of the body. Crushed ice with the consistency of snow is placed in a plastic bag, may also be repeated, repeatedly applied for one minute, then removed for four. This is used for various inflammation, strains, sprains, pleurisy. Ice packs can also be used for headaches. You want to consider when using ice packs to place a thin cloth between the pack and the skin to prevent frostbite. Watsu Massage Watsu is a very soothing type of massage that takes place in warm, waist-deep water. It was developed by Harold Dull back in 1980 when he started giving shiatsu stretches to students floating in warm water at Harbin Hot Springs in California. Watsu's name comes from the combination of water and shiatsu. Because water is so relaxing and the therapist cradles you like a child, this can be a profound treatment that works on both mind and body. Offered in many Asian spas and increasingly available in many hospitals and health centers, Watsu massage and therapy takes place in a warm pool of water and helps practitioners regain their range of motion and clears away blockages in the patient's circulatory system. What happens during a Watsu treatment? A spa has to have a special Watsu pool heated to the exact same temperature as your body. It should be private and quiet like any other treatment room. Some spas have outdoor Watsu pools surrounded by walls with cloth panels overhead to create a combination of sunlight and shade. The client and the massage therapist both wear bathing suits. The therapist gets in the water first, then the client enters. While the client sits on the step, the massage therapist puts floats around the client's ankles. This helps with buoyancy. During Watsu, the therapist literally cradles the body with one arm supporting your knees and the other around the therapist's back. One arm is wrapped around the therapist's back as the other floats free. The therapist then twirls the client through the water very slowly and gently, first one way, then the other, 
taking the body through a series of passive, passive stretches and twists. Being held in warm water is deeply relaxing. And Watsu's gentle stretches have a therapeutic effect on the body. The buoyancy and support of the water allow the spinal column to be moved in ways that aren't possible on land. The benefits of Watsu. Seniors will especially benefit, benefit from the constant present presence of a therapist who massages and supports the client through a series of gentle stretches. Those who suffer from Parkinson's disease, arthritis, and fibromyalgia will find Watsu massage extremely comforting and beneficial. Many people also find Watsu works on an emotional level as well, promoting trust and connection. Some people find that the first session is all about learning to trust and the fact that someone is there to support you. Others are trying to overcome a fear of water. If this is, a, if this is your client, be sure that they tell the massage therapist this. Others are able to fully relax and find it deeply soothing from the very first session on. Where can I get Watsu? Because of the special pool, it's still a relatively unusual service, and it's easiest to find in California at a resort spa. But here's a list of major places to get a Watsu treatment. In California, you have Harbin Hot Springs in Middleton, Miramont Resort Spa in Palm Springs, Two Bunch Palms Resort and Spa in Desert Hot Springs, Sea Spa at Lowe's Coronado Bay Resort and Spa in Coronado, and Fairmont's Sonoma Mission Inn and Spa and Rain Dance Spa at the Lodge at Sonoma. In Arizona, at Canyon Ranch in Tucson, and Miamo at Enchantment Resorts in Sedona, the Boulders Resort in Carefree, the Sanctuary Spa at Camelback Mountain, and Alvadoro Spa at Royal Palms Resort and Spa, both in Phoenix. In New Mexico, you can get Watsu at Shana, Shana Spa and Wellness Center and the Bishop's Lodge Resort and Spa in Santa Fe. In Florida, it's Marco Island Marriott Resort, Golf, Club and Spa on Marco Island. And in Las Vegas, the spas in Las Vegas that offer it are the Aguasola Spa at J. W. Marriott, Las Vegas, Canyon Ranch Spa Club at the Venetian Hotel, and Spa Bellagio at the Bellagio. And in Scotland, one spa and health club at the Sheraton Grand Hotel and Spa in Edinburgh, Scotland. Conditions that are helped by hydrotherapy. Hydrotherapy is used to treat many illnesses and conditions, including acne, arthritis, colds, depression, headaches, stomach problems, joint, muscle, and nerve problems, sleep disorders, and stress. The benefits of hydrotherapy, which is commonly used for relaxation and to maintain a person's health, it's also excellent for reducing or relieving sudden or long lasting pain. The benefits of hydrotherapy include dramatically increasing the elimination of waste, thus assisting detoxification, loosening tense and tight muscles and encouraging relaxation, increasing the metabolic rate and digestion activity, hydrating the cells, improving skin and muscle tone, boosting the immune system, allowing it to function more efficiently, and improving the function of the internal organs by stimulating their blood supply. The contraindications for hydrotherapy. Cold baths should not be used for young children or the elderly. 
Sauna baths should be avoided by people who suffer from heart conditions. Persons with impaired temperature sensation run the risk of scalding or frostbite at temperature extremes. When a condition is recurrent or persistent, you want to consult your physician to determine whether a physical therapy of this type is suitable for you in your case. If you have diabetes, avoid hot applications to the feet or legs. Also avoid full body heat treatments such as body wraps. Hot immersion baths and long hot saunas are not recommended for those with diabetes or multiple sclerosis, women who are pregnant or anyone with abnormally high or low blood pressure. You don't want to take a cold foot bath if you're prone to bladder or rectal irritation. People suffering from sciatica, pelvic inflammation, or rheumatism in the toes or ankles should avoid cold foot baths. Elderly people and young children may be exhausted by too much heat and should avoid long, full, hot body treatments such as immersion baths and saunas. And if you are pregnant or have heart disease, always consult a doctor before taking a sauna. Before we leave the subject of hydrotherapy, I wanted to just mention the different types of water. You have hard water, water that rinses to the earth's surface from underground springs. It's rich in minerals, especially calcium carbonate, which it picks up while moving through the crust. Then you have soft water, which is surface water, consisting of runoff or rain swollen streams and glaciers or water from reservoirs. Usually soft water is less dense in minerals. Distilled water, which is tap water that has been distilled or boiled until it turns to steam and condensed back into water again. Distilled water is purged of all minerals, chemicals, and any other substances other than water. Then you have mineral water, which is spring water, which is naturally alkaline and is a mild diuretic, substances that increase urine production. Spring water it's when mineral water collected from springs closer to the Earth's surface. Spring water is thought to possess fewer minerals than mineral water and is described as having a cleaner taste. Still and sparkling water. Water that flows naturally to the surface on their own. Sparkling water describes that water which is pushed to the top by underground springs and has bubbles. Still water is sparkling water minus the bubbles. And the importance of drinking sufficient water can't be emphasized enough. It's very important that we drink sufficient amounts of water in a day to make up for the water lost. The benefits of drinking water is widely recognized and drinking pure fresh water is essential to our health and well-being. Our need for water increases as we get older. As we age, our skin and mucous membranes become thinner and lose more water, and our kidneys function less efficiently. So our need for water increases. You may not feel thirsty, but you should get into the habit of drinking water, especially after any body treatment and massage or when you perspire, like in a sauna and body wrap. Indigenous spa treatments. Indigenous treatments are a spa trend that highlights local ingredients in therapeutic traditions. You, for example, a ruby grapefruit scrub in Texas, a blueberry wrap in Maine, a lomi lomi massage in Hawaii, and a wine scrub and wrap in Napa, California. Spas use a lot of creativity to come up with ingenious treatments. At their best, indigenous treatments are deeply authentic giving you experiences you couldn't have anywhere else, like a highly skilled Lomi Lomi massage by a skilled Hawaiian massage practitioner. Hawaiian Lomi Lomi Massage Massage is one of the oldest and most profound forms of healing, and Lomi Lomi is one of the most profound forms of massage. What makes it so special? Well, the word Lomi Lomi simply means massage. 
What it is is a unique healing massage derived from the ancient Polynesians and more specifically the master healers of Hawaii. To understand the depth of Lomi Lomi Massage, it helps to have an understanding of the Hawaiian philosophy called Huna and how the philosophies of Huna relate to body work and healing. A fundamental assumption of Huna is that everything seeks harmony and everything seeks love. Perhaps this can best be understood by one of the alternative names for Lomi Lomi, which is that of Loving Hands Massage. This flowing with total energy, using long, continuous flowing strokes, combined with a very loving touch, relaxes the entire being, assisting in a letting go of old beliefs, patterns, and behaviors that cause limitations and which are stored in the cells of our body. The memory, beliefs, and childhood programming and conditioning is stored in all the cells in our body. The Hawaiians look at times in terms of energy flow, following the idea that an idea or belief can block energy flow as much as muscle tension can. Lomi Lomi helps release the blockage and at the same time giving the energy new direction. Thus, Lomi Lomi is not just a physical experience. It also facilitates healing on a mental, emotional, and spiritual level as well. The Hawaiians view all aspects of the body as one and believe that the physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual are all part of the whole self. When healing is affected on one level, all levels are affected. When harmony is lacking, the effect is pain physically, mentally, emotion, or spiritually. Illness is a state of tension, which leads to resistance, which blocks energy movement. Lomi Lomi Massage helps release this and therefore facilitates the road to healing. On a physical level, through Lomi Lomi, stress and tensions are relieved, blood and lymph flow assisted, and the elimination of wastes and toxins stimulated. Lomi Lomi usually commences with a stillness between the practitioner and client, often with the practitioner's hands gently resting on the client's back. In this stillness, the practitioner will quietly say a blessing or prayer, asking for whatever healing is needed to play, take place during the massage. Alternately, the client may be asked to set their intention for any healing they would like to receive. The massage therapist then works very intuitively with the client. In this respect, there is no set format or sequence for the massage and no two massages will ever be identical. The massage is given in fluid rhythmic motion using the forearms as well as the hands. Some people have described this as a feeling like gentle waves moving over the body. Another feature is that different parts of the body may be massaged at the same time. For example, one arm or hand may be working on a shoulder and the other hand may be working on the opposite hip. This assists the recipient in total relaxing as it's impossible for at least or extremely difficult for the brain to focus on two different areas at the same time. By not working on areas in isolation, a deep sense of balance and harmony is achieved. With Lomi Lomi, the technique is important, but the priority is loving the body. Using intuition so the massage is right for the client. The client on the table is not viewed as someone to be fixed, but a being to be returned to harmony and balance. It is important to remember that the massage therapist does not heal but is the facilitator for the healing. Under body and full body strokes also help to free energy, make the body soft, promoting free and abundant flow of life energy in the client. According to Huna philosophy, energy also gets blocked in the joints. So gentle stretches of the body and gentle rotation of the joints are therefore incorporated to assist the release of tensions 
and assist the flow of energy. Once again, not forcing, but feeling the level of the client's resistance or comfort. The massage therapist may also hum at various points during the Lomi Lomi as the vibrating and amplified energy that results also aids in the release of blockages. Dance work or hula movements combined with the breath work of the practitioner are also important and integral aspects of Lomi Lomi. The reason for the hula type dance around the table while massaging are all important to assisting the energy flow both within the practitioner and recipient and helps keep the energy at a high level. This combined with breathing techniques by the massage therapist are also important in assisting the energy flow. The sharing of the breath, the essence of the creator or universal energy or whatever name you give to it, is an all Hawaiian custom and generally enhances the energy flow once again. Another major difference from other massages is that a person lies directly on, a, on the vinyl of the table and not on a towel and rather than being covered completely by towels, is covered by a small sheet or towel, leaving most of the body exposed during massage, maintaining the client's modesty. This makes it a lot easier to perform the underbody and full body strokes without interrupting the flow of the massage. To overcome and ensure the comfort of the client, heaters can be used to maintain room temperature at a warm level. Because the practitioner works intuitively, a massage may be slow and very relaxing, or at times it may be a little faster and therefore invigorating and enlivening to the body. Sometimes the clients may experience an emotional release as the massage can release and shift negative emotions, negative belief, and other stuff that has been stored in the cells of the body, with the healing effects of the massage continuing long after the massage is over. The massage can be done by one person or by two or more working together. Having two people massaging tends to send the client into an even deeper level of relaxation as you can't focus on all four hands doing different things. This is really one of the secrets of Loma Lomi and love and nurture the body as if it were your own. Auntie Margaret who is one of the oldest and widely recognized teachers of Lomi Lomi, has a definition of Lomi Lomi, which is the loving touch, a connection of heart, hands, and soul with the source of all life. Students of Lomi Lomi learn to flow the love from the heart through the hands to connect with the soul of the one receiving the massage. Healing is increased by love, love received and love given. To the Hawaiians, love includes tolerance, forgiveness, acceptance, non-judgment, appreciation, compassion, respect, and so many other elements of this very foundation of the Lomi Lomi massage. Stone massage. Stone massage uses smooth stones as a massage tool or as a method of heat and cold applications. Native Americans have been using hot stones for centuries. Teaching applications of hot and cold stones to massage therapists began in Arizona by Mary Nelson and it is called the stone therapy, which we'll go into later. Hot stone massage is a popular spa technique, especially in Ayurvedic treatments. And most spas offer their own versions of hot stones. They might call it lava stone massage, river rock massage, warm stone massage, and so on. A hot stone massage, however, takes a lot of skill and sensitivity on the part of the massage therapist. During a hot stone massage, which became popular in the U.S. in the 1900s, the therapist heats up as many as 50 basalt stones to 120 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit and rubs them over your oiled body and rests them on top and beneath you, on your stomach, in the palms, between your toes. The stone's warmth enhances the relaxation effects of the pressure. Some people believe the stones have healing grounding qualities, which makes hot stones 
more of a profound experience than your basic massage. The therapist will leave some of the smooth heated stones in contact with your body and use others to massage you. Cold stones are sometimes incorporated, especially on the face, where they have a firming effect. Hot stones is a good feel treatment found in most spa menus. Hot and cold stone temperatures have said to be like the vascular gymnastics of the circulatory system. That's the system that controls self-healing in the body. There are no requirements for using hot or cold stones in a massage. However, being able to manipulate the stones at the proper temperature is an essential skill. Training can also be done through book or video, so it's worth asking for an experienced therapist so you don't get burned. The heat of the stones has an immediate relaxing effect and the therapist will glide them along your back and limbs and set them on muscles and soft tissues or tuck them into your hands. They should never be uncomfortably hot or nudge a shoulder blade or a spine. If they do so, it's important to speak up. You may be asked to lie down on hot stones, which looks potentially uncomfortable, but it isn't, as long as they've been carefully arranged to make contact with soft tissue. Many therapists believe that the stones themselves have an energetic charge and that needs to be maintained by placing them in a spiral pattern, placing them in a full moon periodically. A description of the stones. Hot stone treatments are usually combined with a massage to give your muscles the attention they need. This is a great pick for an athlete, for example. The hot stones are never rough. They're always flat and smooth. The hot stones used on the back are about the size of a large egg, only flat. The stones are heated in an electrical heater that either provides a temperature reading or has an adjustable thermostat control. The massage therapist always holds the stones first before touching them to your body, which ensures that the temperature will not be too hot. Everyone, however, has their own comfort range, so be sure to speak up if the stones are too hot for you. Cool marble stones are occasionally used during treatment, particularly if there is inflammation. Stones of various sizes are used. Basalt is recommended for hot stones and marble is recommended for cold stones. Large stones are needed for large areas of the body like the back and small stones are needed, for example, between the toes. The hot stones made of basalt are a type of rock that is rich in iron so they retain heat. River rocks are normally used because they are smooth and they're smoothed over time by the river's current. The stones are immersed in water and heated in an electrical heater until they are within a certain temperature range. The placement of the stones is usually at specific points on the back, in the palms of the hand, or between the toes, and they vary depending on the client's condition and preference. What happens during a hot stone massage? Before you arrive, the massage therapist sanitizes the stones and heats them in a bath about 120 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit water. You'll usually start face down with a therapist working on your back. First, the massage therapist warms up the body with the traditional Swedish massage, then massages you while holding a heated stone. As the stone cools, the massage therapist replaces it with another. The therapist uses many stones of various shapes and sizes, the big ones on big muscles and the small ones on smaller muscles. The therapist might also leave heated stones in specific points along your spine, in the palms of your hand, on your belly, and even between your toes to improve the flow of energy in your body. Be sure to speak up if the stones are too warm or the pressure too intense. And you can always ask them to stop using the stones if you don't like how it feels. If you like heat, but not the stones, lava shells and steamed towels are another way to get heat into a massage. The stone massage procedure is as follows. You want to heat the stones or chill the marble stones in a freezer. And for treatment with hot stones, you remove and dry the stones you wish to use. Here are some of the stone arrangement suggestions. 
You can ask your client to sit up for a moment while you arrange approximately 10 large stones on the table. Place six stones on either side of the spine, base of the neck, back of the shoulders, and on the sacrum. Place four large stones on the top drape over the chakra areas, and place two additional large stones over the shoulders. Place two medium-sized stones on the sides of the neck, place two middle-sized stones in the palms of each hand, and place four small flat stones in the palm of each hand as well. Massage the client using the stones until the desired effect is achieved or until the stones reach body temperature. Massage can be performed using the stones in long gliding strokes and for more specific point work on tender areas. You'll replace with warmer stones as needed. Another type of massage is called lava shell massage. Lava shell massage is another way to use heat which loosens up muscles in a massage. Some spas are adopting it because the preparation and cleanup is so much easier than hot stone massage. The lava shells are set on a pretty tray with glass pebbles for a beautiful presentation that stimulates the senses. Like all good massage therapists, you will ask the client about what is going on with their body. The lava shell massage would be a warming and soothing of the muscles without a lot of invasive pressure. What happens during lava shell massage? You start face down and the massage therapist lightly massages the body using the long traditional strokes of Swedish massage while holding the shells. The shells are real tiger clam shells from the Philippines, where the clams are a staple of the local diet. The reusable shells are polished and a plug hole is drilled in one side. Inside that hole is stuffed a sachet of minerals, dried sea kelp, and algae mixed with salt water and essential oils. When the massage therapist adds water and plugs the hole, a chemical reaction causes heat that lasts up to one to two hours. The clam shell fits into the palm of the hand so the client could feel both the heat of the clam shell and the touch of the massage therapist's fingertips. These shells are highly polished so they glide easily over the skin and feel very nice. Lava shells also hold their heat longer than stones, so you don't have to interrupt the massage to switch out the stones as often. The shells get hot the more they sit and they cool off the more they are moved. So how does lava shell massage compare with hot stone massage? The lava shells is soothing and gentle and it's a good choice if you like heat and just want to relax. I wouldn't get it if you had specific muscle aches and pains that you wanted the massage therapist to address. Hot stone has the potential to be more deeply therapeutic than lava shells. And most therapists use the stones to warm up the muscles and then get them into a more deeply with their hands. They also place stones on the belly in the palms of your hands and even between your toes. Lava shells are probably easier to master because they're smaller and the therapist must gently glide them over your body. So get hot stones if you want more of a deep tissue massage and try lava shells if you want to just relax. La Stone Therapy is trademark style of massage that uses both hot and frozen massage to massage the body. While cold stones may not sound appealing, they feel refreshing on your warm skin and have a beneficial effect. La Stone Therapy is similar to, but not exactly the same as hot stone massage. La Stone uses 54 hot stones and 18 frozen stones and one room temperature stone. La Stone massage can only be performed by someone who is certified to be a La Stone massage therapist. And this is good because insufficient training is sometimes a problem with hot stone massage. La Stone massage was developed in 1993 by Mary Nelson, 
a massage therapist and native of Tucson who began to get visions and verbal guidance from her Native American spirit guides. This is a quote, work each day's work. I was intuitively led to use more stones and developed a method of progressively opening up energy channels or chakras of the body, she says. The idea quickly caught on and was adapted to become hot stone massage, a treatment that is now found in almost every spa. La Stone Massage involves a more spiritual or metaphysical component than a simple hot stone massage. The stones themselves are called the Stone Clan People and are considered to have healing properties. La Stone Therapy begins with a gentle stretch and Swedish massage to warm up the body's muscle tissues. You sit up and the, and the therapist places two rows of warm stones on the treatment table in alignment with both sides of your spine. The therapist covers them with a soft towel to protect you from the heat, then assists you as you lay back down on them. Then he or she places stone of varying weights on the body's key energy channels, including the seven main chakras. Pebble-sized warm stones are placed between your toes and medium-sized flat stones are placed in your palms. The massage therapist also uses both hot and cool stones and extension of his or her hand while doing Swedish massage. Alternating between heat and cold both stimulate and relaxes the circulatory system, which is very detoxifying for the body. In cooperation with heated stones, chilled marble stones create a dramatic movement of fluids within the body. The benefits of all types of hot stone therapy. Your clients will enjoy a hot stone spa treatment if they have specific ailments such as a sore back or fatigued muscles in general. Rocks heated by warm water are covered with essential oils and placed in specific areas on your client's body and these rocks give pressure to pressure points on the body to relax them even further. You may rotate from hot to cool rocks depending on your client's requests. A common question people have is whether to get hot stone versus Swedish massage or a regular massage. People also get hot stone massage for a variety of health conditions such as providing relief from pain associated with fibromyalgia, arthritis, carpal tunnel syndrome, and other chronic conditions. Also, it helps to decrease pain and muscle spasm, reduces chronic stress and tension, increases flexibility in joints, which aids in easier mobility and movement, relieves pain and tension created by strain and contracted muscles, and some people find the warmth of the hot stones to be comforting and get this type of massage for relaxation. Hot stone massage is suited for people who tend to feel chilly or who have cold feet. It's also suited for people who have muscle tension but prefer a lighter massage. The heat relaxes the muscles, allowing the therapist to work the muscles without using deep pressure. The heat of the stones warm and relax the muscles, which allow the therapist to apply deeper pressure if desired. The warmth of the hot stones improves circulation and calms the nervous system. And some massage therapists place stones on points that are thought to be energy centers of the body and to rebalance the body and mind. A caution for hot stones. Exercise caution when using hot stones because if they are too hot, they can burn the skin. According to the Associated Bodywork and Massage Professionals, the greatest number of lawsuits filed against massage therapists were due to skin injuries from hot stones. Hot stone massage is not appropriate if you have diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, or on medication that thins your blood. You shouldn't get a hot stone massage if you're pregnant or have a sunburn. May also want to reconsider if you are menopausal as it may trigger a hot flash. The contraindications for stone massage in general 
is to be aware of people with infectious skin diseases, rash, neuropathy, or open wounds. You don't want to have hot stone therapy immediately after surgery, immediately after chemotherapy or radiation, unless recommended by a medical doctor. You don't want to have it if, for people who are prone to blood clots, as there is a risk of blood clots becoming dislodged. If you have heart disease, diabetes, or circulatory conditions, check with your medical doctor before having a massage. Pregnant women should check with their doctor first if they are considering getting a massage during pregnancy. A full body hot stone massage or placement of hot stones over the abdomen is not recommended during pregnancy. However, a massage therapist trained in prenatal massage may be able to do a spot treatment for certain areas of muscle tension. In pregnancy, the core body temperature should not be raised during treatment. Women with high risk pregnancy should avoid hot stone massage altogether. Hot stone massage is contraindicated for people with rheumatoid arthritis because the heat of the stones may trigger a flare up. Massage should not be done directly over bruises, inflamed skin, unhealed wounds, tumors, abdominal hernia, or any recent fractures. If you're considering getting a hot stone massage, talk with your doctor first. Keep in mind that alternative medicine should not be used as a substitute for standard care in the treatment of any health condition. Proper sanitation for the stones and shells. Stones used during treatment should be cleaned with an antibacterial soap and hot water after each use. Some therapists add a little salt to the soapy water. If stones contain any massage lubricant, an additional step of rubbing isopropyl alcohol over them is recommended. Stones should be washed, rinsed, and placed on a towel to dry. This is a treatment where you're counting on the spa and the massage therapist to be impeccable with sanitation because those stones have been used on someone else's body. Water in the unit where the stones are heated should be replaced each day. The heating unit should be emptied, clean, and sanitized, and then dried on a daily basis. In the treatment area, you always want to be using disinfecting cleaning materials. For the massage equipment, flesh, freshly laundered linens, towels, and blankets is a must. In the treatment area, to ensure that the room and equipment surfaces have been cleaned according to the requirements of the Communicable Disease Control as defined by the Infection Control for Regulated Professional document. The linens, towels, and blankets that come in contact with the client have not been used by a prior client. And the linens used for draping will allow for full coverage of the client during the massage. The use of area rugs, linens, and pillows that do not interfere with the client's ability to get on and off the table is one aspect of safety that is important to consider. Any obstacle or substance that could make the floor slippery is removed from the treatment room to prevent accidental falls. This includes that all feet are wiped off so any residual oil does not make it slippery for the client when getting off the table onto the floor and that the equipment is properly maintained and the manufacturer's instructions are followed correctly. Understanding hygiene is essential for massage therapists to keep themselves safe from infectious diseases and to keep them from spreading between their clients. The main goal is to discourage and prevent growth or spread of pathogens and allergens. Sanitizing and disinfecting your massage office consists of keeping your table, face cradle, sheets, bottles of lotion, oil, hydrotherapy equipment, as well as the carpet, walls, and counters clean and sanitary. Clients also may have allergies and sensitivity to mold and any scents or laundry detergent, so use hypoallergenic products when you can. After every massage, you must wash your hands and forearms to keep them free from bacteria. Proper manicure skills will help keep nail beds clean and smooth and not leave scratches on clients. Here are some of the resources that I used for this presentation. 
that we listen to today. I encourage you to look at any of these resources if you want more in-depth detail. Congratulations! Now that you've finished this presentation, you have to complete the final exam that was sent by attachment to you. Make sure your name and license number are at the bottom of the exam the way you want it printed on your e-certificate. And email the completed exam to kajini.d at gmail.com. To satisfy your Spa Therapy Part 2 online class requirement, you must achieve a passing score of 70% or higher. An e-certificate will be emailed to you at the email address you provided upon registration. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to contact me at kajini.d at gmail.com. Also, check out these NCBTMB approved continuing education distant learning classes for massage therapy. The URL is above. We have acupressure for the massage therapist, aromatherapy for the massage therapist, ethics for the massage therapist, growing your body work practice, nutrition for the massage therapist, planning for a luxury destination spa interview, spa therapies part one, this one is spa therapies part two, sports massage, whole body cleansing for the massage therapist, understanding chakras and improving your eyesight with Qigong are not NCB and be approved, but definitely a great learning experience. Payment is handled directly through PayPal, and once you've registered and paid, you'll be taken to the class, and you can listen to the class as many times as you like. Complete the exam and return it via email, and when you receive a passing score of 70% or higher, you'll receive an e-certificate of achievement via email. If you have any questions with regarding any of these following classes, please feel free to email us at bewell at gmail.com. Beacon Wellness Arts is approved by the NCBTMB as a continuing education approved provider, number 4509109, and is also sponsored by the NCBTMB to teach New York, Florida State Board of Massage Therapy, number 5014392 with CE Broker, Texas, Oregon, Washington State, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, North Carolina, Licensed Massage Therapist Continuing Education, as well as several other states that require NCBTMB Continuing Education Approval. Thank you so much for listening and go peacefully in the Dow.